now. So is Ron Paul the one? The Texas congressman and presidential hopeful joins me today from Hampton, New Hampshire. Congressman, it's good to see you. Iowa votes two weeks from tonight, and the establishment here in Washington and the Republican establishment in Iowa uh, has a case of the jitters right now. I was just in Iowa last week. There are some people who think you have the possibility to win that state. If not, they expect you to be very strong in the top two or three. I want you to listen to this editorial in the Des Moines Register uh, just the other day. The torpedoes are now in the water for Paul, and one of them is labeled a Paul win hurts the Iowa caucuses. I've heard similar worries from GOP leaders in Iowa who fear that Paul's crazy train will haul the caucuses out to the political fringes and derail forever, stranding Iowa's coveted status. Why are they so worried about you? <laughs> it's sort of entertaining. <laughs> so much for democracy. As long as democracy goes their way, it's okay. But if you get enough support from, you know, the people and you win an election, then it doesn't mean anything. So, uh, I, I think they see me as a challenge for the status quo, you know, uh, the, uh, there's a lot of people I challenge, you know, everybody from the military industrial complex to the banking system, uh, to the bailouts, uh, to our foreign policy. It's a, it's a big deal because I want changes, but that's what the American people want. The American people are with me and that's why I believe I'm going up into polls. Uh, we've had this conversation a few times during the campaign and it is fair to say that you are less out there, if you will, this campaign than you were in the last campaign. And you get amused by this in watching in the debates. However, there's still a question of whether, even if you perform well in Iowa, even if you win Iowa, can you grow to the point of being the Republican nominee? I ask in the context of this. We had a new poll, national poll this week, and we asked Republican voters, who would you vote for under no circumstances? In other words, which Republican would you never support? Uh, you, sir, top that list. Forty-three percent of Republicans said they could not support you under any circumstances. Does that number suggest that while you're Growing in popularity, you can't grow enough to win the nomination? Uh, no, it, it doesn't mean that. And those aren't uh, permanent numbers. But you might say, well, what about the young people coming into uh, voting now? How do I do? Exceptionally well. What about independents? Exceptionally well. What about the willingness of a Democrat to vote for me versus the other ones? All of a sudden, there is the coalition. What surprises me is, is really... Uh, you know, uh, parties are supposed to try to build, and the Republican Party would like to build so they don't have to fight for these elections all the time. So I have young people, I have independents, and a lot of Democrats will come my way. Why wouldn't they ask me a question and say, what is it they like about you because we'd like to, you know, build our party, but, but they never do. What they want to do is say, I don't count, and lock me out and say, oh, if you are elected, it's just a fluke. We don't want, we don't want your people in, in our party. Our, we, we have a close-knit party, and if there's these new, young, energetic people, if they come in, oh, that's bad for the party. I don't really understand that, so uh, I don't understand their rhetoric about building the party and then saying, well, we don't want Ron Paul's people coming in because they might take over the party. Well, what, what, what if we have an influence and what if we believe in liberty and peace and prosperity and sound money? <laughs> what was so dangerous about that? Uh, some of those young people, I was struck by it when I was in Iowa last week. It's a lot like it was for President Obama back in 2008. They support you, not necessarily the party. It's more personal than it is the party. And a lot of them say if you don't win the nomination, they would like you to run as an independent, as a third party candidate. Would you rule that out, sir? Well, I have no intention of doing it because I am concentrating on, uh, you, you know, doing very well in these early primaries. So I, I don't have plans to do that. It, it doesn't even cross my mind as planning to do that. But you don't say never. Well, I'm not an absolutist to say nothing. You know, I'll never do this. I'll never do that. You know, when I left Congress a long time ago, I had no intentions of coming back. But if I had said, I'm never coming back to this place, you know, 15 years, 12 years passed, and then I ran again. But I had no intention of coming back. So I don't think it's good to say I absolutely won't do anything.